Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a little haul video for you guys. I picked up a few things at Butterfly Reflections Inc. this month and then also a few things from Amazon. So I'm going to just go through those things with you real quick and um, that way I can start repackaging them, cutting them down, using them, etc. So I'm just going to set everything off to the side and go through things one by one. So this haul is actually a few weeks old and I was kind of saving some of these things because I wasn't sure if you guys would be as interested since there are no stamps or dies in this haul. It's basically all paper and then a few other accessory type things. Um, but I have been putting off using these things. I haven't even opened the paper pads because I wanted to share them in a haul with you guys. So you could see what I'll be using and they've just been sitting here and sitting here and so I decided to just go for it today and um, maybe share some tips with you guys for um, how I choose my pattern paper pads, which ones to purchase and also my favorite paper for ink blending and for Copic coloring and my favorite glue. So I'm going to do all of that today. So first I'm going to go through the stuff from Butterfly Reflections Inc. and I'm going to share the accessory things first. So first thing I got was this little packet of embellishments from Trinity Stamps. They are little clay flowers, which I thought would be really fun for shaker cards. I don't know if I can get it open. I'm not sure how this... I've never bought one of these kind of packets before. Okay, there we go. It opens on the side. So there's just all these little clay flowers in there in all different shades of pastel, and I thought that would be really fun to just have in some shaker cards and create some fun looks with that. I've never had any kind of shaker material like that before, so I thought those would be cool to use. The next thing I got was an embossing folder, actually. I haven't used these in a really long time, but I really liked this one from Pink and Main. This is called Rainbow Embossing Folder. But what I thought was cool about this one is not only can you emboss this as rainbows, as you know, it shows like this, but you could turn it upside down and then it could be like fish scales or something really cool for like underwater themed cards, which would be great for summertime. So I just really love the versatility of that. Technically, you could even turn it on its side just for like a cool art deco type. Um, you know, design behind your cards, uh, your focal points. So I thought those would be fun. So I went ahead and grabbed that and then I will jump in to the paper pads. So I got four different paper pads. Three of them were from Simple Stories. The first one being this Summer Lovin'. The Simple Stories ones are all six by eight now. And at first when they switched over from the six by six, I was really upset. But actually these work really well for slimline cards. So um, I've kind of gotten with the program since then. <laughs> but anyway, I this is one of the reasons that I really wanted to get into this video and not put it off because I want to use these these papers. They're so beautiful. And you know, I wanted to show you the whole pack as it came um, before I jump into it. So very cool color palette for summer. I have not even looked at this. I just cut open the little seal and that's it. So um, best summer ever. Probably wouldn't use that, but I think this peachy tone is quite pretty. Let's see what the B side is. Okay, rainbow stripes, very usable. I can see myself using that a lot. Really fun beach icons with the lifeguard and the um, swimming suits and flip-flops, snow cones sunglasses, beach balls, lots of cool imagery in that. And then there's a gorgeous like sunshiny yellow gingham check. Some diagonal rainbow stripes, very cool. Rainbow polka dots. 
There is um, another one of these that I probably would not use. Maybe some of the strips on the side. Um, but let's see what the other side has. Okay, rainbow snow cones, very cute. The floral is really beautiful. I really like that. And then you have a pink gingham on the back. There's another large print. So if you're somebody who likes to kind of frame up things and hang them in your room and switch them out seasonally, that could be cool. But I would probably use the B side, which I really do like, that beautiful floral. There are some summer fruits, watermelon, lemon, cherries, oranges, strawberries, very cute. And then, oh, that's pretty, a pink polka dot on a red background. So again, I probably wouldn't use the top half, but this is definitely usable down here. And then the back is really cool, almost like a 60s floral print. I love that peach background behind. And then here we have a gorgeous floral. Definitely want to use that on a card. And the back is a kind of navy blue check. What are those? Oh, little fireflies. How cool. That would be so cute on a card. And then we have a green gingham. There's some different little icons and tags. If you're somebody who does like junk journaling or whatever, you could uh, cut those apart. And then on the back we have a red gingham, and there's more little icons, and then an aqua gingham, and then the pad repeats. So I'm going to go through the whole haul, and then afterwards I'm going to share my tips on why I chose these pads. So just stay tuned to the end for that. The next pad that I got is also from Simple Stories. It's called Celebrate. The most cards that I make are birthday cards, and the most cards that I need are birthday cards because I uh, send out a lot of birthday cards and I also sell a little basket of cards at work for customers. And uh, birthday cards sell the best because a lot of people will pick them up when they buy a gift card. Um, so I'm always in need for birthday cards. So this was a like no brainer for me. So there you have a fun little. Um, thing you could frame that up for somebody's birthday and kind of stand it up on the table near their cake or something or by their presents that could be really cute cool and maybe like a white frame to match the font but on the back we have these really fun banners those could be very fun on a birthday card and then on this page we have some cake icons very cute little squiggly lines on pink. This always reminds, reminds me of the old-fashioned telephones with the cords that um, when I was a kid I used to wrap those coils around my finger when I was talking on the phone. And then we have some little yays in all different colors. I really love the color palette on this one too because I think it's very um, unisex. You could use it for boys or girls. There's some confetti hip hip hooray there's a really pretty pinstripe on the back on a navy background and then more of those little coils with stripes there's some little asterisks on a pink background almost like confetti or little sparkles and then we have a very beautiful floral so I probably wouldn't use this part again you could frame this though um, I would probably use the pieces at the top and the bottom though and then on the back you have this little um, thin banner style uh, sketchy lines. Here we have a bunch of different sentiments. Hip hip hooray, all the cake, way to go. Yay, yay, yay. So you could even um, cut those out with a circle die and have those be a sentiment on a card. And we have some confetti on a navy blue background. A little party never hurt anybody. Um, then we have some squiggly lines on the back. Another gorgeous floral, and I love those little bumblebees that are thrown in there. And then there's a yellow background with the white asterisk. Party hats. Very cool. And then there's more squiggly lines, um, more like wavy lines on a red background. Icons. Uh, a really pretty stripe. 
more icons there. So you could even cut these down as like a little tag on a birthday present. Big polka dots, and then this pad repeats as well. So next up is another one from Simple Stories. This one is called Let's Get Crafty. I was really drawn to this color palette. I think it's really cool and different. So let's jump into this one and see what we've got inside. So that's actually a really cool floral cluster down at the bottom. You could absolutely trim that out, fussy cut that and use that in an art journal project or something else. And then we have a diamond print on the back, black and white. Some really pretty confetti in that gorgeous color palette, so unusual. And then there's like a ledger print. That floral is really beautiful with the aquas and yellows. When I was a child, I used to love coloring with aqua and yellow. I don't know what it was about that combination, but I loved those two crayons in the Crayola box and they were always the most worn down. So that color palette really speaks to me even now. And then we have another like grid print that would be really fun. And we have some crafty icons. Those would be cool to cut apart and use in like a, a junk journal or art journal anything like that. There's even um, one that looks like a Distress Oxide ink or Distress ink. Really cute. And in the back we have a mint and aqua check and then we have a pink and white. It almost looks like a craft mat. Look at that. Wow, that's really cool. That's really ingenious kind of. It even has like the little ruler around the outside edges. Very fun. And then we have a beautiful stripe. Love that. Love how bold that is. And then we have florals layered on uh, calendars, which are really cool. You can kind of see September, October. Very cool. There are some little polka dots in a rainbow pattern on black. And that one I probably wouldn't use much of, maybe a little bit at the bottom and top, but I would probably use the back instead. It has that mustard yellow that's so popular with little white flowers with pink centers. And then this was one of the patterns that I love the most. I just love that combination of orange and hot pink and white florals on that kind of grayish background. And then there's the nice minty green leaves. Very pretty. I think that would be such a cool combination for summery cards. And then we have a orange and pink gingham on the back. Very nice. That's really cute. Little cubbies, like almost like a Calax system with all kinds of cool little icons in there. Crafts and books and typewriters and pens, and bins, a globe, lots of cool stuff on that. And then on the back we have like a organic polka dot on pink. And then another ledger print in yellow. And then that one's kind of fun. The yellow is pretty bright. It reminds me of something from the 80s. But because the print is so small, I think it works. Um, definitely brings the summer vibes. And then we've got more tags, little cut aparts. Then we have a aqua on like a, a darker blue and turquoise background. Very pretty. More icons with more of those distress inks. <laughs> Very cute. And then we have another kind of grid background with like a mustard yellow on white. And then this pad repeats as well. And then I got one pad from Doodlebug. I wanted something that was a bit more masculine. So I chose this one called Great Outdoors. I thought that would be really fun for like camping, fishing, any kind of outdoorsy type scenes. And Doodlebug always does such cute designs. So, so let's take a look. 
So there we have some fun camping and outdoorsy type icons. There's little Bigfoots and bears and then all kinds of different camping and outdoorsy gear. I see lanterns and backpacks and coolers and thermoses and <laughs> sleeping bags and boots and just so many different cool things there mixed in. And then on the back we have some nice trees and then we have an orange plaid tone on tone and we have some little um, almost like journaling strips that you could cut apart and use and then there's little cabins in the woods really fun on the back is a very subtle wood grain and then more little tags that you could cut apart or use on gifts and there's the back side so they really do match up and you could write your message on the back and we have a very tiny polka dot on a brown background more little icons that you can cut apart and also sentiment strips and then I really love this one there's little buffaloes and foxes moose hedgehog owl bunny fox I already said fox, didn't I? But it's a different fox. Um, raccoons, beavers. There's a whole bunch of animals in here. Very cute. You don't see buffaloes that often on um, pattern paper or anything, so I thought that was cool. Uh, there is a blue starry background, tone on tone. Very cute. And then there's um, like woodsy, outdoorsy um, sayings and icons there, like um, signs almost. Very subtle though, and then little tiles that you could cut apart and use on various places. You could even punch those out with like a circle and use them as like a focal panel. And then there's little tiny florals on a very soft orange yellowish background very pretty I think that one's really gorgeous and then we have a plaid and some polka dots with texture and designs inside and then a green gingham and a blue plaid and then little strips with all different kinds of camping icons and we have some fall leaves then we have a very subtle polka dot. It's like a cream polka dot. Is it even a polka dot or is it more of a dash? I can't even tell. It's so subtle. But it's really nice because it's a very nice layering print because it just goes with a lot of things. Um, just very creamy and light. And then we have some more fun camping icons. Just really small little miniature scenes, which are really cute. Then we have some aqua fish, and then we get back to the beginning of the pad, which repeats. The rest of the stuff that I picked up was from Amazon, and just a heads up, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you're interested in getting any of these things for yourself, um, if you want to use my links down below, that would help my channel, and I would really appreciate it. The first thing that I got is the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue Refill. So it comes in this big bear <laughs> jar, which is really, really cute. Um, this reminds me, when I was a kid, I used to have honey that was in a bear jar. I don't know if they still make those, but um, I think it's like kind of the same packaging if I'm right, if I remember right. So this has become my favorite craft glue. I asked for suggestions here on my channel a long time ago and this was the most recommended glue from you guys. So I took a chance on it. It's kind of pricey, but you guys were absolutely right. It is so worth it. I got the four ounce bottle and I noticed that when the glue was getting really low, it was maybe down to about here that the the nozzle here where the pin goes was getting clogged more often and I think that was just because there was more air in the bottle so I went ahead and got a refill I've actually already 
refilled this now all the way to the top and you can't even tell um, like there's barely any missing so this is quite a good value for the money this I believe is the same price as this bottle this bottle comes with all the different accessories though there's different little tops for it and uh, nibs and things but uh, I, I use this one all the time. I don't change it out really. But anyway, this is going to refill this many, many times over, I would say, at least five or six times would be my guess. Um, although it says only 11 fluid ounces, um, so it's only, I don't know, not even three times as much, but I swear I haven't even used a third of it. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to keep track and see how it goes, so I know, but... Um, I definitely do recommend this glue. It, I love that super fine tip. I talk about it a lot in my videos. You get into the tiniest little places to, so everything is really well adhered down and it dries super fast. So definitely recommend it. Um, I also picked up a pack of my favorite cardstock for ink blending with Distress Inks. And it's huge, so it's going to be hard to fit on my screen here. But it's the Bristol Smooth Surface Cardstock. There are two different kinds of Bristol, I believe. But the one that I get is the Smooth Surface. Um, I believe the other one is Vellum Surface. So this is the one that I use. And it also comes in different sizes. I like the 11 by 14 because I found that this one cuts down the best for um, regular A2 size cards, so five and a half by four and a quarter cards with the least amount of waste left over. So what I do is I cut down the majority of the pad into that size panels so they're all ready to go for card making. Um, I only save just a few sheets at the end, maybe five or so sheets. Um, in case I want to do like slimline cards or mini slimline cards or a square card just so I have some paper left over for you know whatever else I decide to do but mainly I make five um, five and a half by four and a quarter cards a two so uh, I do cut down all of that paper most of the paper ahead of time just so I have it ready to go and I keep those in a little bin in one of the drawers in my desk. So all I have to do is reach down and grab one and then I'm ready to start creating. So the last thing I picked up was another pack of my favorite paper for Copic coloring. It is the Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock. So I have tried several different kinds of paper for coloring with Copics. This is hands down my favorite. It has a really nice weight to it. It's a hundred pound, uh, yeah, a hundred pound cover weight and a hundred brightness. So it's a bright white. It's really thick and it's really smooth. It has ultra smooth finish for professional results when used with alcohol-based markers. Um, it is super smooth and the color just blends beautifully on this paper. So it can be tricky to find. Not a lot of places sell it. For a while I was buying it on joannes.com, but lately I've been buying it on Amazon. And I usually get the 50 sheet pack because I do go through it quite a bit. Um, but this is what I use for all of my Copic coloring. I've tried the Nina, both the 80 pound and the 100 pound, and um, I don't like either as much as this one. The 80 pound is a little too thin. The 100 pound, or is it 110 pound? I can't remember now, but um, it's a little, it's not as smooth as this. The Spectrum Noir is just silky smooth and I think it makes a huge difference with my coloring. So this is the one that I recommend 100%. It is absolutely worth it. I think you definitely will see an improvement in your coloring if you've been struggling with whatever paper you've been using. I would definitely say give this a try. All right, so that is everything that I bought in the haul. So now let's go into some tips on pattern paper mixing and what to look for when you buy pattern paper packs. Okay, so 
here's what I look for when I buy a pattern paper pad. Number one um, is going to be the layering possibilities. So what do I mean by that? I usually like to use multiple pieces of pattern paper on a card. So I feel like you get more pop for your layout and your design if you have more than one sheet of pattern paper on your cards. Actually, hold on and let me just look through my cards really quick and see if I have a couple that I can use as an example. All right, so I've just pulled out a few from my stash. Um, I don't keep a ton of cards in my house because I do send a lot of them out or, um, or like I said, I have a basket at work of cards for sale. Um, but here are some examples of cards with pattern paper. Um, this one here, I have a floral print and then layered on top, I have a, like a bolder aqua print with a very small detail to it, like a tone on tone. And then here I have three different layers. So there's a bold polka dot, there's a blue plaid that matches that. And then we have this floral that ties everything together down at the bottom. Here is one where I've just used two patterns and one makes the frame and then another one makes the inside of the frame. Um, here is one where I only use just the tiniest bit showing on the outside edges, but that tiny bit of print ties into the print that I did with Copics on the girl's skirt. So if that print weren't there, it wouldn't tie the whole card together as much as having that tiny little bit of pattern behind. Here's another one where a lot of the pattern doesn't show because it's a larger focal panel, but you do see there is um, one, two, three layers on there. So we have the green that pulls in all of the green details. We have this blue print with some different colors in it that pulls everything together. And then we have this pop of red at the top and the bottom that pulls in her little um, scarf on her head. So uh, that gave me, instead of just one pop of color, it's one, two, three pops of that red to pull the whole thing together. Here's another one where I used three prints. So we've got a beautiful floral, we've got the nice polka dot on the cream colored background, and then we've got this yellow, um, almost like one of those Moroccan tiles, um, just to add another thing on the card. Here's another one where it's just one piece on this one, but it really does pull the entire color palette together. So I think that worked really well on that card. And then here's another one where I used one as the frame and then another one as the inner frame. And it also just pulls that color palette together. So those are some examples of how I like to layer the pattern paper on the cards. So what am I looking for when I'm picking them out? First of all, I want a variety of prints and I want a variety of colors and I also want a variety of sizes of the print on the paper. For example, let's take this Summer Lovin' Pad. So what I would pick, I usually like to call it my base print and then I have a tone on tone print usually if I'm going for like three and then I have another like secondary uh, print that has multiple colors that pulls the th whole thing together. So for example, if I were using this as my base print, the base print to me, I don't know why I call it the base. A lot of times it does end up on the base of the card. That's what I mean by base print. It is the bottom layer. And usually that is my boldest one, not always, but a lot of time because adding the other layers on top of that base print tone it down and make it not quite so bold, but you still get the pops of the bold print in the corners or what, you know, however you're doing it, top and bottom, if you were just to do this and not the flag banner at the top. So this would be my base print, okay? This here would most likely be my secondary base print because it has all of the colors as the base print combined, but in a completely different pattern. It's also a much smaller pattern with those narrow stripes. So this can lay over this beautifully. 
Now, the one thing that I would like to have in this mix is a tone on tone print. If I were using these, I probably wouldn't layer just these two together because I feel like that would be a little bit too much. It needs something else in the mix to soften it. So I would flip through and look for something. So the check could work because it is a completely different print, but it is a larger stripe than this one, so I probably would not mix those two. Um, the polka dots might work. Um, it is a more colorful print. It's not tone on tone, but it is another size and style of print, so that could work. Uh, let's see. Just going to flip through. Okay, this one could work. It's not exactly tone on tone, but it's close enough. Pink and red are in the same family, so that could work as another layer to that. You know, if you were to crisscross these across the card. Let's see if there's anything else that would really work in here. Um... Maybe the blue gingham, not um, it, even though it's the same as the yellow, you can see that the yellow is a much stronger color. So the aqua is much more subtle and it's also the same color as the background on this print. So it would be a more subtle layer in this mix that would help um, kind of soften all the color going on. So the other option would be to just not include this print at all, and then any of these gingham ones. So maybe I would only use two prints on that particular case, you know, and any of these ginghams would go well with that or the polka dot. I would not layer print on print. I feel like those two would be competing. Same with these two. It, it's too close to the same size. So I'd be looking for something much more subtle. This could work. But I feel like because there are so many things on here and because you have those little pops of yellow, which kind of bring them to the forefront, I feel like that would probably be in too much competition with this one. But these two together would be beautiful. Those would be beautiful layers. Um, absolutely, I would do that. So let me see if there's anything else I can use as an example here. Let's do one of the florals. So... Let's see. All right, let's do this one because I'm really drawn to this one. So what would I layer with this one? This one would also be very pretty. Um, I feel like these are too, too much in competition. I feel like this gingham is too similar to the size of these florals. And because it's such a dark color, it's a little bit too bright. I mean, you might be able to get away with it, but I probably would try to look for something that's a little bit more complimentary. The green would be better. It's softer and it ties into all the leaves. With the blue, the only thing it ties into is these berries, which are very, very small. There's a lot more of the green leaves, so those would actually work very nicely together. The red, maybe. It's not bad, but again, it's a bit bold, so I probably would steer away from that. The aqua would also be really pretty with this one because it's very similar. You can see that that just almost seamlessly blends together. So, okay, so let's go on to another pad. So that's just what I'm looking for in this one. I'm also um, looking for color palette, something that fits the season and that I can just imagine different kinds of images being colored in this palette. So this, I would do so many different beachy things um, with this color palette. I, th I think this one is perfectly named. Summer Lovin' is perfect for that. All right, so let's go with something that's a little bit more tricky. I feel like this pad is a little bit more tricky to mix together, and I'll tell you why. This one really does have a lot of larger prints. You can see that right from the packaging on the outside. Very similar in size, although this doesn't necessarily denote the size from the inside. But also there's a really wide mix of color palette in this pad. 
So this one is more tricky. If I weren't really drawn to this color pad, this color palette, and to some of the imagery, uh, this one is probably one I would would stay away from. But I think I can make this one work. So let's try to find something. Okay, so say this print that I really love here with the orange and the hot pink. So right on the back, this already tells me that is a built-in perfect print. I love double-sided paper because a lot of times the B side of the paper is a perfect match for the other side. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, a lot of people do put their paper pads together that way. So these I would pair together in an instant. I think this pulls in all of the pops of color from this one, and this is a very small plaid print. So this works really well. Even though the florals are small, the plaid is smaller. So that works. Let's see what else. Um, okay, so this one, this one is tricky. You might pair it with this one. It would pull all the colors together. They have very similar color palettes. If I went with this one, I probably would use small amounts of one of these. So maybe you would use all, you know, your whole card front of this and then just cut down like a narrow strip of that to go at the bottom or maybe run through the center or vice versa. You could use this one as the card base and then maybe just cut a small strip of that and run it across the belly of your card. Um, or this one would be a good one. It's kind of hard to show you, but um, this one would go really well. It pulls in those aquas, and this is a very subtle plaid. Even though it's a larger plaid, the colors are very similar, and they're muted in tone, so they would layer together really well. I would not layer this one and this one because there's too much white so the print is too similar to this one. Um, it has that grid lines. And what I wanna do when I'm mixing prints is break up the prints, you know, to kind of pull your eye to different areas of the card. I don't want two prints of the same kind or same style layered on top of those. I, I don't think, uh, at least for my particular taste, that that um, makes a cohesive look. So what else? Okay, so take this one that I really like. I think this one, see, like I said, a lot of times either the B side or the one right next to it uh, will match really well. So look around in the paper pad, but it's not always. Sometimes you have to do a little more hunting. But I do think that these two work together well. Again, I would probably use this one only in small doses. Um, maybe just like a side strip down the center of a not, um, so say it was this card, I would take like this, maybe even a little bit smaller, and maybe just run it here, or even down the center, but I don't know, for some reason I just feel like maybe over to the left would be nice. Um, also, this one would probably work well with that one, or the plaid, mm, maybe not the plaid, because it's too similar. See, you've got the lighter and the darker, and then you've got lighter and darker, and I feel like those could be too close. Maybe just not enough contrast. So I'd probably skip that, but maybe that one would be a good one for the grid, or uh, this one as well. That one would work. So this one is really, really nice. I would probably use this for a birthday card, Let's see if we have something. Okay, so you can maybe layer some of that. That has the same color palette in there. So that could work. What else? Is there anything in here? I would not layer polka dots on polka dots, even though they're a different size and a different shape. Um, like I said, I'm trying to break up the print, not use the same thing uh, on top of each other. Hmm, no. Nope. So maybe for this one, I would use a bit of this grid because the grid is very small lines and it's tone on tone. It's like a light pink on top of a darker pink. So it's very subtle. So those two could layer together nicely. 
anything else. Like I said, this pad in particular is a bit trickier. So this might be a case where I would just use um, like a single layer, like right here on the edges, just use it as the color palette to pull things together or like um, this one here with a smaller focal point so you see more of that pattern paper showing around the edges. So this one would probably lend itself to a bit more of just one layer of pattern paper cards, but there are definitely mixing possibilities in this pad. It's just a bit trickier than some. So let's take a look at this one really quick. Hopefully this is helping you guys. I know this is a bit long, but I really hope that you're getting some value out of this because I know I get a lot of questions on how to layer pattern paper or people just say, I wish I could lay layer pa pattern paper like you can, like you do. And you can, you can, you just need to know what to look for. Um, so let's take a look at this one and see what we could use. Okay, this one is very bold. I like it, but I probably wouldn't use just this because I feel like it's would be in competition with your focal panel, if you know what I mean. You know, unless you had a really big focal panel and then you wouldn't hardly see any of this, and then it's almost wasted to use it because you wouldn't you wouldn't get to see much of it. Um, the smaller patterns are better for, you know, going just around the edges because you can see more of those colors, which are going to pull your design together. So if you're using a really big print, you really do need a smaller focal panel so that you're showing off that paper to its best advantage. But still, I think it might be too bold. So you could mix it with this one. I definitely wouldn't mix it with this one. I feel like that's too much going on there. Um, okay, the blue stripe would be nice in there. So you could definitely do like a blue stripe and just use part of this print or um, the top and then the blue stripe down at the bottom of your card. Sorry, I'm imagining the card going this way. Um, so there's ideas for that one. Okay, let's take, okay, this floral matches really well with the pattern that's on the B side. I would definitely combine those. I think that could be really lovely on a card. I would probably use the bottom part of this because it has more of the florals and then cover up this part with this print here. All right, so what else? We've got this blue polka dot. That could work well with some different things. Um, definitely with this one here because it's such a thin stripe. It does have all the same colors, but um, the thin stripe is is much more in contrast with this. Plus, it's a completely different color background, but a muted background. So some of these stripes almost disappear into the pattern. Do you see that? I know it's kind of far away from the camera. But like the white, the pink, the yellow, they kind of disappear. So it is a little bit more of a tone on tone style print. Not really, but it has the same effect. So that's why those two could work together. Um, I could also mix this one with this floral. But if I did that, I would probably want a third print and probably not this one. For that case, I would definitely want a more tone on tone. So like for this, I, if I used the, this floral in this place, in the place of this base print here, and then this blue polka dot in the place of this polka dot here. I love florals and polka dots together, as you can see. So I would be looking for something to run across that to kind of just tone those two bolder prints down. So it could be that, but it's still kind of a bright color. Let's see what else we have. Anything else? Um, so maybe more of this one. Maybe I would use more of this one. This one is a really versatile print that would go with a lot of things. Let me get back to that floral and just check it out. Okay, yeah, I feel like that 
could work really well together. It's kind of hard to see there, but this one, this one, and this one could layer really nicely. I think that's probably what I would pick for that. Um, okay, so let's do one more. So this party hat, this one would go really well with that because this has nice pops of yellow that immediately draw your eye. So these two would work really well together and you could definitely just use those two or you could mix in the red maybe. If you're going for something like super bright and fun, like a, a child's birthday card, those could work. Um, maybe the stripe depending on how you layered it. Maybe just if you use just a little bit of the stripe, that could look nice together because it pulls in the colors, but it's a much smaller um, print. And it also ties into like the stripey hat or the blue pinstripe again. Those three would work well together as well because this is a smudge, even though it ties in all these colors, which is a good thing, uh, it's a much smaller, less in-your-face style print, so I think those three would work well together. So I could go on and on, but I don't want to bore you guys. So let's get to the last pad, just so I have some ideas for you with each of them. All right, so this one I think is going to be pretty easy because there's lots of tone-on-tone -tone prints in here. So the trees, the plaids... Um, the wood grain, all of those are going to layer so well. Okay, this one does not have any green in it, this little animal print. So I would definitely choose either the plaid. The plaid would look nice with it. The wood grain would look nice with it. It's kind of hard to show you because they're not next to each other on the pad. Um, I know there was also a blue, well the blue stars could work because there's little blue birds in there. There was also a blue plaid somewhere in here. Now these two I probably would not print mixed. Be, even though the background is the same color, this one has very small icons and this one has very small icons. So even though these are tone on tone, because these icons are so small, I feel like they would be in competition with each other. I swear there was a blue... Oh, here it is. I just somehow missed it. This one would also work really well with this one. But we'll pull in all those little blue birds. Alright, so let's pick another one. So let's go with this floral that I really like has all those really pretty colors in it. This one automatically makes me think of the orange gingham. That's like a match made in heaven. That would be beautiful together. Um, the blue gingham could also work. Where is it? Why do I keep losing that blue gingham? Well, anyway. I wouldn't mix the stars because once again, these are smaller icons and I feel like they're, even though these are tone on tone, they're in too much competition with the size of these. I want different sizes, like I said at the beginning, different sizes, um, different styles. Okay, there, the blue, the blue gingham works, but it definitely cools this pattern down. So if I were keeping with the summery vibes, if that's what I was going for, I would definitely stay with the orange. I think the orange does more for this print than the blue does. Um, I also would not mix the trees because they're too similar in in size and then that's two kind of bolder prints so definitely not those. Um, the plaid maybe but again normally if these were larger I would say yes the plaid absolutely. But to me, these are in competition because it is a wider plaid with a lot of white in. And then it's just very similar in size. So I probably wouldn't mix these two unless I had something separating them. So if I had this at the very bottom of the card and this at the top of the card, I would want a strip of something in between them. Um, you could probably use one of these strips like the aqua or even this really creamy color. 
that would work. Yeah, I, I would go with the orange. I think that edge is just perfect. Oh, you could, no, I wouldn't throw the wood grain one in there because there's no, well, there is a tiny bit of brown in the very center of those flowers, but it's not very much. It definitely doesn't catch your eye, so I probably wouldn't use the brown wood grain, but you could. I mean, if you used a small amount of it, you could. I wouldn't use a very big strip if I went with the brown. So, okay, let's do one more. Let's do these leaves, because there's a lot of similar shapes and colors. You know, the colors are all pretty prominent on this one, so there's a lot of options. This one you could, could use the blue because it's a larger bit of that blue. I think that does pull together nicely. I think this green would also look nice with that. I would prefer the blue. I just feel like that works better. Definitely would not use this. I feel like it's just too similar even though these are really small. I don't know. For, to me it just doesn't make either one of these prints pop. And that's what you're kind of going for. You want to help your uh, your patterns shine. Would not go with the stars because they are too similar, but you could maybe do this one because it's so subtle and tone on tone. You could probably get away with it. Again, I might put a strip of like the blue in between if I did that one just to break it up a bit, but uh, I think that's the best option there. But anyway, okay, I really hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, I don't know, hopefully it was. Please leave me a comment and let me know because I know people have been asking me for a video like this for a really long time. It's just kind of hard to explain what your eye is drawn to. So I hope I did a semi-decent job of it and, and that it helped you out because I, I know that... Um, to me, pattern paper is one of my favorite supplies in card making. Like, sorry about that, I just bumped the camera. But um, I really don't think I would get as much enjoyment out of card making if it weren't for pattern paper. I just love it and I feel like it adds so much to a card. And, you know, I just, I mean, it just pulls everything together to me. Yeah, the images are important, the coloring is important, 100%, but, you know, I just can't picture the card without the pattern paper. I just feel like it's what brings the whole thing together. So, I don't know. Hopefully you guys uh, agree and that you enjoyed this video. So, thank you so much for watching and leave me a comment down below if you enjoyed it and I'll hopefully see you soon with another video. All right, bye-bye.